In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about last dollar income. This is one of the most expensive mistakes that I've made building my business. It has cost me millions of dollars. I've seen it cost other contractors millions of dollars. And so we're gonna get into it in this video so you can learn from my lesson and the lesson of many others. My name is Eric Barstow. I have started or acquired 24 painting companies in the last decade. I run eight to this day. We do over $20 million a year in business. I've coached over 3,000 people in my training programs at Painting Business Pro. I've seen so many people make this mistake when building their business plan and setting their plan to hit their goals. Um, and like I said, it's cost me millions of dollars over the years. So in this video, I'm gonna explain to you what last dollar income is, why it's such an important principle for you to understand, and how you can apply it to make sure you don't lose millions of dollars yourself making this mistake like I did. So we're gonna go through six things. First, we're gonna look at what is last dollar income. We're gonna look at gross profit margin math. So you just gotta understand the math of profitability so you can understand last dollar income. We're gonna talk about why you must hit your targets. A lot of people set goals in their business to motivate them, they set big goals, but if you don't hit your goals, it's incredibly costly. We're gonna look at that. We'll talk about how to make a business plan, the fundamentals, because you gotta have a business plan or you're not gonna have a, chance, a good chance at hitting your targets. We're gonna talk about how to set your targets and how to hit your targets. The point of the whole video is how do you set a business plan and a game plan to make the most money possible and maximize your profitability. This took me years to learn. Hopefully you'll learn it by watching this video. So let's jump right in. Okay, so last dollar income said simply is the idea that your last dollar in your business is your most profitable dollar in your business. So you start your company at the beginning of the year and you're gonna have some fixed overhead in your business. Some companies it's bigger, other companies it's smaller. For bigger companies you have a lot more overhead, smaller companies you have a lot less, but you have some overhead number, some amount of money you're gonna spend this year just to operate your business, even if you do no revenue at all. You know, you've got your office lease, your insurance, maybe there's some salaried employees that aren't tied to your performance, et cetera. All of these expenses make up your overhead. So when you start the year, you've got some amount of overhead, and then as you progress through the year, your last dollar becomes your most profitable dollar. So let me show you what we mean by looking at some of the math. So let's just assume at your business, you have a 50% gross profit margin. So gross profit is the profit left over after your variable expenses. All right, so for most companies, that's gonna include your material cost on a project, your labor cost on a project, including taxes and insurance and workers' comp burden. So you've got your material labor plus all those add-ons. And then for a lot of people, you'll also include, you know, probably sales commission in here. Uh, some people might include, depending on how you pay your project managers in there. But for making the math easy, let's just assume that you've got a 50% gross profit margin. So, and let's assume that you have $200,000 in overhead for your company when you start the year. Like that's what you're gonna spend this year on overhead and fixed costs. No matter how much revenue you do, that's your overhead. So $400,000 is your break even point, right? So the first $400,000 in business you do, you make 200,000, which is 50% in gross profit, which pays for your overhead. So this is how this looks for a business. If you did, with these two numbers here, $400,000 in business, you would make $0 in profit and 0% profit margin. If you go into a million dollars in profit, you'll make $300,000 in profit and a 30% profit margin. And over time, the more revenue you do, the closer you get to 50%. So if you did 4 million, you would make 1.8 million and 45%. Now, Obviously, a company with 200K in overhead isn't gonna go and do 4 million. That's not the point. The point is that if we peg our targets right here and we wanna make 30%, if we fall below that, we're gonna fall below 30%. If we go above that, we're gonna go over 30%. So this is really the key is when we think about the target we actually wanna hit, we need to make sure we end up on this side of that target, not this side because every dollar you, we fall short in this situation and costing us our gross profit margin. So you might have a goal, let's just say your goal is 20% profit, but your gross profit margin is 50%, then when we set our goal of 20%, I might say that's 200K on a $1 million business, if I fall $100,000 short of this goal, 
I'm actually falling 50K short on profit because my last dollar is my most profitable dollar. So if I do 900,000 on that same plan, that last 100, I lost 50. So I actually make 150K. So I miss my revenue target by 10%. I miss my profit target by 25%. So that's the fundamental idea behind last dollar income and how important it is that we focus on our last dollar. That's where all the money is, is on the last dollar. All right, so now let's jump into, you know, what's next and where do we go from here? All right, so now I wanna give you a couple more examples about why this is so important. So the importance of hitting your targets. So this is how this cost me millions of dollars. So for a long time, we, we would set goals to set big ambitious goals. You know, we get really aggressive where we say, hey, we, we think we can go and hit this big number. So let's say, you know, one year we had a company or a, a goal of $7 million and we wanted to make 1.4 million in profit. All right, which is really great. And you know, at our company, we're, we are at about 50% gross profit after paying labor materials and sales commission. We're right around there. So let's, clean, we'll do 50% just to keep the math easy. So here's what happened is if we would have hit 7 million, we would have made $1.4 million in profit. But what actually happened is we ended up hitting about 5.8 million. And so that's $1.2 million short. So that was a $600,000 loss in profit, but, we also miscalculated on some other things. Our marketing was a little more expensive. Our sales rate was a little lower. And so not only did we drop this down to 800 grand, but we actually went even lower than that. And it was a year of about $400,000 in profit on a $6 million company, which is really rough when you're planning for 1.4 million and planning everything around that. All right, so this one year, it was like a million dollar mistake because we set a target that was out of reach and then we invested money to hit this target, but then we didn't hit that target, we hit this number, and there were some other profit blunders which cost us an enormous amount of money. And that was just one company, but we made this mistake across multiple companies that year, and we didn't make this kind of mistake one year, we made it for a few years until we finally were like, stop, what are we gonna do? Where are we screwing this up? And that's what we'll get to in a minute. Just to give you a couple more examples. So I also have seen this with so many painting contractors. One of the biggest mistakes I notice when people are setting and making their plans for the year is I look at a business plan and I can see, I can see the setup for this now. I'm thinking of someone specific I worked with, I work with, and I saw their plan a year ago and I'm like, uh-oh, I don't like that. There's there's a lot of things that can go wrong here. It's unlikely you're gonna hit that number and if you fall short, you might not make any money at all. And sure enough, what happened at the end of the year, this is like a $2 million company, literally made no money, zero. They made no money on a year, which is pretty rough because when you're running a $2 million business, you're used to making, you know, three, 400 grand a year. You've got a lifestyle, you got bills. Like that really wrecked, that can really wreck somebody. All right, now let's look at the other side of what happens when you do hit your goals and you do this right. So we've got one of our companies um, that Hunter runs, it's Elkhorn Painting. Last year he had a goal of 4.5 million to make 20% net profit, but we did some things differently. And at the end of the year, he ended up doing 5.1 million in revenue and ended up at a 22% profit margin. And that includes, we made about a, uh, nearly $100,000 in investments, which would be another couple percent added on and we had really high marketing expenses last year um, which we've brought down so he was an example you know on the other side of man how much money you can make and how profitable your business can be at scale when you hit or exceed these targets because like we showed you before if we're down here we can make zero percent there's your goal percent and then there's hey we can get up to 25 to 27 percent profit if we exceed this target all right, so this is why it's so important that we hit our targets or exceed our targets because this is where all the money is and all the profit is and over here is the danger zone. Clear? So now we wanna talk about, okay, so, so now that you understand that I'm in business to make money, like that is the primary goal. Now, yes, we, wanna, we want to make uh, money and run our business in, in a very 
honorable way that takes amazing care of our employees and pays people well, including our painters, our subcontractors, our staff. We want to run a business that serves our customers really, really well. We want a business that we love to work in. We want to serve our community. And we want to do that in a way that maximizes profit for you because that's why you are in business. And this is one of the most important principles for maximizing profit is that I end up on this side of my target, not this side of my target. Because like we saw earlier, a 10% miss in target is a much bigger miss in income. And we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars. If you had a goal this year to make 200 grand and you miss by a little, that could be 25% off your income, which is 50 grand. Like this is a huge deal that we wanna make sure we get right. All right, so now we're gonna talk about, okay, knowing how important this is, what do I do about it? How do I make a business plan? How do I set my targets? How do I hit my targets? All right, so really simply, you wanna have a business plan. So here's what the fundamentals of a business plan are gonna look like, because remember, this is the goal, is we have missing our targets, hitting our targets, this is our target. Okay, well, we need a business plan that has a plan to hit the target, to start. All right, that's the first thing we need. So what, what we start with is we have kind of a, a very, very basic overview of your financials in your company. So you basically have your revenue right here. So this is your top line, all right? And then we minus our variable costs, for a painting company, that's gonna be labor, materials, burden, and probably sales commission. And then we have our, that, after we take that out, we're left with our gross profit, which is some percentage. And then you minus out all of your overhead and you could put marketing. We usually have our marketing down here. And then you have your net profit. All right, so this is the general equation. So you gotta have some financial game plan for the business for the year. Say this is the revenue we're aiming for, this is the gross profit we're aiming for, this is our overhead costs, and this is our net profit, because that's, that's, the, that's the financial plan for how are you gonna make money? All right, so that's the first thing you need to be actually operating a business, and most people don't have this, or it's not very accurate, or it's not updated. And it's so, so important because if you don't start tracking that now, you're not gonna have that data to get better about it the next year. All right, so that's the first thing we need to have. That's gonna be like this financial piece right here. All right, so we literally use this as a spreadsheet. In fact, I'll put a link below this video to like our fast growth roadmap where you'll get access to like a pretty basic business plan that can get you started with all this stuff, but I'll just go through it in the video for now. So you've got a financial plan. All right, and your financial plan is kind of this whole screen, you know, snapshot, not screenshot, this whole snapshot for the year. All right, and then you need to track it monthly. So every month, what actually was our overhead expenses? And are we trending to hit them or be ahead or behind? So that we know that we're not, we don't wanna be surprised at the end of the year that I overspent on overhead by 30 grand because where's that money coming from? It's coming out of your pocket. All right, so we need to track your actual financials monthly against your plan. And then we also need to track your gross profit against your plan. All right, so the way that we do this is every single job, every single job, you're tracking your variable costs so you know your gross profit. That's what you do. Every single job, you're just tracking that to make sure that's on track throughout the year. Every month, you're tracking your overhead to say, hey, we planned on spending 10 grand on vehicles this year, and in January, we spent 800 bucks. Cool, we're on track. So we track that monthly, we track that on every job to make sure the math is working out. So as long as our overhead expense is on track and our variable cost and gross profit is on track, then the only thing we need to do to hit or exceed our target is we need to hit this top line revenue. So how do we do that? Well, it's really simple. We hit it with our marketing and sales tracking and our production tracking. So we've got to get the business and then we've got to fulfill the business to hit the top line revenue. And this is how we fundamentally manage a business plan to hit our targets. So what we do on marketing and sales is we basically are tracking that whole marketing and sales funnel weekly. So how many leads did we get? How many estimates did we do? How many jobs did we book? And what was our total sales? Leads, estimates, jobs book, total sales, weekly. All right, so we need to know that every week. So every week I can say, well, we were supposed to sell 20 grand this week. We actually sold 18. Doesn't seem like a big deal, except 
that two grand, a $2,000 miss per week times 50 weeks is a $100,000 miss and is a $50,000 miss on your gross profit. So one of the biggest mistakes people make is they kind of write off missing targets. And that was one of the biggest mistakes we made is we would miss targets and be like, oh, it's okay, we'll make up for it later. It's like, if you can't even hit the small targets now, how are you gonna exceed your targets later? Like this is a problem and you need to address it quickly. We do the same thing with production. This is basically just number of jobs we produce in a week and total revenue we produce. If you sell it but you don't produce it, it never hits top line revenue. You actually have to produce those jobs. So sometimes I'll look at someone's business plan and say, hey, you're on track for sales, but you're like $100,000 behind on production. Well, if you don't actually get the jobs painted and, and jobs collected, you don't hit top line revenue and you don't make the net profit. It rolls into the next year, which is fine. Eventually you get that money, but it's not on this year. And now it's on next year. Um, all right, so this is the, the essence of a business plan is we've got to map it out. Because if you don't map out, how are we going to get the business? How are we going to produce the business? And what is the financial outlook going to be? Then we don't even have a target. We don't even have a target. And so we won't know, are we ahead of the target or are we behind the target? So this is the first fundamental thing that you must get in place in your business. If you don't have this at, at a bigger company, you're just, you're going to get, you're going to get bit. You have to have this as a bigger company. So you might as well get this installed as a smaller company so that you can start to learn and build that into your practice so that when you get big, you can run a healthy company. The other thing that's so important about getting a business plan in place is you start to, you, you'll start to learn the ebbs and flows of your business. So we've been doing this enough years now that we, we know certain weeks throughout the year that we've seen four years in a row. We can look back at our business plans that we track four years in a row, that week dips by 25%. So now, when we make our plans for the year, we plan a 25% dip in that week. Because if we don't plan a 25% dip in that week, then our plan is going to be behind because there is gonna be a dip. And so, you're gonna to start to learn by making these plans and tracking them, you're gonna to start to know where your assumptions were wrong, where you made mistakes, so you can make a better plan to exceed your targets. So this activity in your business takes about 15 minutes a week to do, to just update. It doesn't take long, but it can be one of the most profitable activities in your business because if it enables you to hit or exceed your targets, this is where all your money is. Without this plan, maybe you'll hit that, maybe you won't. With this plan, you can make a much better plan to hit or exceed, okay? So now let's look at how should you set your plan with this principle in mind? All right, so hitting or exceeding your target is the goal and it all starts with how you set your plan and your goals for the year. So let's just go through some fundamentals, some really basic stuff for how to set those goals for the year. So, so we're talking about the financial goals, the marketing sales goals, the production goals across that business plan. So the first thing is if we wanna set a target and it's important that we hit or exceed the target, then we don't wanna move this line too far this way. We want to be conservative. So the first thing is be conservative with the goals you set. That doesn't mean that you can't grow rapidly. In fact, if you're following good business principles, you should be able to grow with huge year over year growth, but you're doing it because you're running your business the right way, not because you're setting a big goal necessarily. So we wanna be conservative is the first idea. Second is just, I'm gonna say the same thing in different ways here, but don't be overly optimistic. All right, so optimism is gonna be the last thing we talk about. How do we crush this? Yeah, that's good. There is There are reasons to be optimistic, but when making your financial plan and your goals for the year, you wanna make sure you're organizing the business conservatively, not optimistically. We'll talk about where optimism and ambition in place. That's with, all right, what am I gonna, how am I gonna attack this thing now? So we'll get to that, but you don't wanna be overly optimistic when building the, the goals and plan for the year. You don't wanna use it to motivate. That's one of the mistakes we made so long as we are very ambitious, we're very hungry, we wanted to grow, we wanted to grow fast, we wanna make a lot of money, we wanna kick ass. And so we would set big goals because that's who we are. But big goals uh, don't help you make more money necessarily. There's a place for that, we'll talk about it in a minute, but 
to be profitable, you need to have a plan you're going to hit or exceed. So when making your business plan, we don't make it to motivate us. We don't make it to inspire us. We make it to like, I can F and promise I'm gonna hit that. We make it to hit it, all right? Always make your plan from historical numbers. So some examples of what I mean by historical numbers. What actually was your lead conversion last year? If it was 60%, don't plan on it being better. Even if you, you might say, hey, it was 60%, but at the end of the year, it was 65%, so let's plan for 65%. Mistake. What actually was your lead conversion last year? 60%? Okay, great. Make your plan at that number. What was your sales rate last year? It was 42%. All right, don't set it for 45%. Set it for 42% or maybe even 40. And then the mistake we've made in the past is we're like, well, we, by the end of the year, we were at 45. So let's set it for 45. But then the next, what we realize is, yeah, that's because at the end of the year, our sales rates always go up at the end of the year. And then they always start a little lower at the beginning of the year. Let's work on fixing that but that's what always happens. The sales rate for the year was 42%, so plan on 42%, maybe even plan on 40. Are you bringing on new employees? Maybe plan for it to be even a little lower. All right, so we wanna plan based on historical numbers, not, not overly optimistic numbers. We wanna make sure that we plan down weeks, right? So like, people get sick. You know, one, one thing we've learned is that if our goal is to sell 100,000 every week, well, then, then what we'll do is we'll go 100, 100, 100, 150, 100, 100, 150, because we know that people go on vacation, people get sick, holidays happen, we always plan down for holidays, we plan for our down weeks. So you've actually got to plan for the unexpected to some degree. All right, so these are some of the, some of the principles. Now, this is not something that you rush, all right? Remember, this is one of the most profitable things you can do is build a plan that you're gonna hit or exceed because that's where all your money is. So. Take your time and think like I, from this principle, like I need to build a plan that I am guaranteeing that I will hit it, all right? And you might need to tinker with this, all right? So at, at our companies, we want to set a plan to hit 20%, you know, and we're talking about companies that are seven figures and up, right? Like one and a half million to, to seven million. So. At 20, we wanna make 20% profit forever. I think everybody in this business, that should be your target is 20% or more. And so that's what we do is we make sure that two things happen when we build our whole business plan. Number one, the business plan results in we're gonna make 20% profit and it's conservative. It's not overly optimistic. We're not using it to motivate us. We're planning from historical numbers. We're not fudging anything just to make a plan. Anybody can put numbers down on a sheet and say, my plan is to make seven, do seven million this year and make 1.4 million. Anybody can make that plan. That's not the point. Making it is useless if you can't guarantee to hit it. And so it takes some tinkering and messing with your plan, including like, man, we need to get rid of some overhead. We need to change the plan here. We need to do something different here. Like you're you're really, it takes some creativity to build a plan that is both pretty conservative and guaranteed and hits your margins and just takes all these things into account. All right, so that's how you make the plan. Your business plan for the year is built to hit. All right, so now let's talk about the place of ambition, optimism, opportunity, because if you're watching this video, you're, that prob you're probably in that category where you have a lot of ambition and optimism and you wanna capitalize on opportunity and there's plenty of room for that. All right, so this is where things get super exciting. This is where we have the opportunity to like really smash our targets and have a ton of fun doing it because honestly, one of the most fun things about running a business is when you're ahead of your targets and you're kicking ass. There's nothing worse than being behind targets worried about making money. All right, so we haven't even talked about that part of this last dollar income of how miserable it is when you're falling short and not making money and how exciting and fun business is when you're ahead of targets and making a ton of money. So now we get to talk about that part, the ton of fun, making a ton of money because we're ahead. So now that we have set a plan that's based on historical data, it's conservative, we can guarantee we can hit it. That's kind of like, okay, I can take that plan to the bank. And now one of the best ways to guarantee hitting that plan is now let's make a, a game plan for the business not like a business plan, but a game plan. Like, this is my strategy, this is what I'm gonna do in quarter one, this is what I'm gonna do in quarter two, this is what I'm gonna do in quarter three, this is what I'm gonna do in quarter four. Like, what's my game plan 
to exceed. All right, so we look at our thing and we say, okay, last year that was our sales rate, but how, what would we do to increase the sales rate by 7%? And that was our lead conversion last year. What would we do to increase that? And yeah, we wanna do 28 estimates a week, but what would it look like for us to bump that to 40 estimates a week? So we start to look at now separately, how do we make our, a plan to exceed that business plan? Because the business plan was built for this right here, right? We took time to make a business plan. It's like, hey, that's a really good plan to hit the real goal we have. But now we wanna kind of make a plan to hit this goal over here. So we make a really ambitious action plan to smash the business plan we just made. And that's where there's like all this upside. So our two biggest companies right now, so the filming of this video is July in 2024, and our two biggest biggest companies right now is Elkhorn Painting and Foothills Painting. They'll both do over six and seven million this year. And uh, Elkhorn Painting is 20% ahead of their targets for the year, which is huge for a company that big that already had a really good plan that was really profitable, they're 20% ahead and the Foothills is 10% ahead. And so this is the, the big change over the last few years we've made is, hey, instead of being 10% behind and struggling to catch up just to make money, now we're like ahead kicking ass and we're actually like leveling up and how do we get further ahead? So this starts to put all this upside here into your plan. And so these are the first two things is, okay, now that you've got the business plan, now you gotta make a plan to smash those numbers. All right, and there is tons of opportunity in your business. There is reason for optimism. There, you are super motivated and ambitious. Now you can make that. And actually, when you start to make this kind of plan to exceed, that's one of the best strategies to make sure you hit your target, is now you start to figure out, how am I gonna exceed this? How am I gonna bump that sales rate up? How am I gonna bump up that lead conversion? How am I gonna increase profitability? How am I gonna decrease my marketing costs? So there's all these different levers you can still pull on to improve from last year but your business plan didn't include those improvements because you don't want to bet on that, but you kind of can't, but then we can really go for it. And now we're doing it from a place of opportunity rather than need and necessity. And it's a lot more fun to do it that way. All right, so that's how we go from here to here. Also, a couple of super important things is obviously you gotta track your numbers every single week and you have to respond quickly when you're not hitting numbers. Um, if there's a third thing I'd put on here, I'm not gonna write it down for the video, but don't be complacent. I've seen this happen in my own companies, you know, where, hey, we're ahead. And then it's like, oh, cool, we're hitting. Now let's take our focus off instead of like, no, we're hitting. How do we push it up another level? How do we keep pushing? Because the reality is, is all these goals are made up anyways. The goal is growth. So we're 10% ahead, great. How do we get 13% ahead? How do we get 15% ahead? How do we get 17% ahead? Like, don't take your foot off the gas. Like, keep, keep, a little bit of pressure on the back of the business, keep pushing your team forward, keep pushing the business forward in a healthy way and not getting complacent just because you're hitting because that's kind of what leads to like this yo-yo effect in a business, which is kind of an emotional roller coaster. It's a lot more fun when it's just like this steady curve up and that's what I see and you know my business partner Hunter does really, really well and they're the ones that are 20% ahead and just super, prof just super profitable because of it. Also, his team makes more money per employee than anybody else does. His subcontractors make a ton of money. They get tons of reviews, tons of referrals. Like it's also the healthiest business for all the people and super profitable and 20% ahead. All right, so that's the video. Uh, that's Last Dollar Income. There'll be a link below this to download a fast, a fast growth guide uh, for painting contractors in there. There's a, a little bit of a business plan to get you started. Let me know how it goes. Drop any comments below and I'll try to respond.